so our first talk will be understanding Rohammer under vulnerability. Understanding Rohammer vulnerability under reduced word line voltage. It's given by Abdullah Gure Yalichi uh, from ETH Zurich. Thank you. So, uh, hello, my name is Gire, and I will present in this talk Understanding Rohammer under reduced word line voltage. So, I'll uh, start with a quick uh, background, uh, and then I'll uh, summarize our work and I'll uh, explain our observations. So this is a DRAM module used as the main memory in many computing systems today. And a DRAM module consists of multiple chips and within each chip uh, we have multiple banks and each bank has like multiple subarrays. And within each subarray we have uh, DRAM cells, uh, each of which con uh, containing one bit of data uh, organized as a two-dimensional array and accessed in uh, a DRAM row granularity. Uh, and these DRAM rows are enabled using uh, some uh, uh, using verb lines, and the DRAM cells are connected to the row buffer using uh, via bit lines. So this is a simplified diagram of a DRAM cell, where the data is stored as a capacitor voltage and accessed through the access transistor. Uh, so uh, we power up this DRAM cell uh, by applying a, a nominal supply voltage of 1.2 volts, at least in the DDR4 standards. And uh, a DRAM cell inherently has uh, charge leakage paths, so it's a volatile memory technology and it requires to be uh, refreshed periodically to, uh, uh, to avoid uh, bit flips due to retention, data retention errors. Um, uh, so to access a DRAM cell, uh, since we uh, access them in raw granularity, we need to perform a raw activation. Uh, which fetches the rows content into the raw buffer. And uh, how we uh, uh, do this is by uh, driving or as asserting word line with a high voltage level of 2.5 volts. And uh, once the row is activated, the content is already in the column and uh, we uh, service all the read and write requests from the uh, raw buffer. And uh, once we service all the, uh, all the requests from row buffer, um, uh, then we need to close or pre-charge this DRAM row in order to access another row. And this is done by uh, applying a low voltage or deasserting the word line. So I'll talk briefly about the row hammer vulnerability. So this is something relatively new. Uh, it, it's an inherent uh, problem or vulnerability of DRAM uh, technology today. And it's getting worse. So how it works is that uh, uh, this is another cartoonish picture of a subarray and uh, we have multiple rows here. Let's say we want to access a row in row two here. So we open the row by applying high voltage to the word line. And then after we, we are done with this row, we need to close it, right, to uh, access another row. And if we do this activation and pre-charge or opening and closing very frequently, now we see some bit flips in physically adjacent rows. And uh, this is not supposed to happen, and it breaks the memory isolation because you can have some other processes data in those neighbor rows, and this is a uh, very critical vulnerability of the uh, DRAM technology today. And when we uh, keep doing the same access pattern, we uh, observe more bit flips in the adjacent rows and some other physically nearby rows as well. So this vulnerability is called row hammer. And uh, there is also some terminology with that. Uh, we, ident uh, we, we named the uh, row that we repeatedly access as aggressive row and the rows that contain bit loops as victim rows. So uh, there is another cartoonish picture here uh, of, the, of a column of DRAM cells. Um, so again, we are accessing, trying to access the cell in the middle here by applying high voltage to the aggressive row. And once we apply this high voltage, uh, basically what happens is it, uh, it disturbs the cells nearby and when we do this many times then we see bit flips. So uh, essentially uh, repeatedly toggling the word line voltage is the key to induce raw hammer bit flips. So this is, the, this is a part of our motivation here, that's why I want to talk about that. But it's just a background for him and uh, with this background I'll uh, quickly summarize our work in the slide. So, uh, repeatedly toggling a DRAM row's word line voltage causes Rohammer bit flips. 
and uh, this vulnerability, uh, it's called Rohammer, uh, worsens uh, in newer generations of DRAM chips. And um, understanding this Rohammer vulnerability is essential to uh, find effective and efficient solutions for safe systems. So uh, the problem is that there is no study uh, before this work that demonstrates how uh, the magnitude of this worldline voltage uh, affects Rohammer. So uh, our goal in this work is to experimentally understand how our line voltage affects raw hammer and reliable DRAM operation. And uh, to, un uh, to achieve this goal, we uh, conduct an experimental study using 272 real DDR4 DRAM chips uh, from three major manuf DRAM manufacturers, namely Micron, Samsung, and Hynex. And um, so we observed that, uh, we made six observations showing that uh, by reducing worldline voltage, it is possible to reduce raw hammer vulnerability of a DRAM chip. Um, and we observe that in like two ways. Uh, first, the bitter rate caused by raw hammer attack reduces, and uh, a row needs to be activated for more times to induce the first bit flip, making the attacker's job harder. And uh, this is not the whole story, of course, because when you change the voltage level, uh, you might affect some other uh, things in the chip, uh, some other mechanisms. So uh, we look at the side effects of uh, reducing our line voltage, and we observe that uh, most of the tested DRAM chips reliably operate using nominal timing parameters. And uh, the DRAM chips uh, that uh, exhibit erroneous behavior can also uh, reliably operate with and increased uh, raw activation latency. And uh, if they are used with singular correcting codes or uh, doubling the refresh rate for a small fraction of DRAM rows. And in conclusion, we, uh, we, we conclude that uh, reducing more than voltage can reduce raw hammer vulnerability without significantly affecting a reliable DRAM operation. So this is the uh, outline of my talk and uh, I'll start with motivation. Uh, so Rohammer is a, a serious DRAM reliability and security problem and denser DRAM chips are more vulnerable to Rohammer. So here in this picture we see that the minimum activation count uh, to observe a bit flip has reduced uh, more than an order of magnitude in less than a decade. So it's getting worse and worse in every generation because of the uh, aggressive density scaling. So uh, prior work already shows that the existing defenses are becoming prohibitively expensive for uh, future DRAM chips and a deeper understanding is needed to uh, find effective and efficient solutions. So prior works also investigate how raw hammer changes under different, uh, with different parameters. So um, with, uh, let's say, uh, DRAM, across DRAM standards, across different DRAM technology sizes and uh, with the ambient temperature, with some access patterns, uh, and uh, with the physical location uh, of the victim cell uh, within a DRAM chip. Um, however, there is a missing piece in all these studies that uh, repeatedly toggling uh, word line voltage is the key to induce raw hammer bit flips. However, uh, it is not studied before experimentally how the magnitude of this word line voltage affects raw hammer vulnerability and on, on real DRAM chips. So uh, we start with a hypothesis. We say that uh, by reducing word line voltage, we can reduce raw hammer vulnerability, and uh, we can do this without significantly affecting the uh, reliable DRAM operation. And uh, we, uh, our goal is to understand how raw word line voltage affects uh, raw hammer vulnerability and reliable DRAM operation on real DRAM chips. So I'll quickly. Uh, uh, introduce our experimental methodology and then I'll directly move into the uh, ob individual observations. So uh, this is our experimental setup we use for this study. It's a FPGA based setup. Uh, we program it with a soft MC, a, a soft memory controller that allows us to uh, issue DRAM commands with precise timings. Uh, so we clamp our uh, DRAM modules with heater pads on both sides so that we uh, and we control these heater pads using a temperature controller so that we can keep the temperature of the chip stable during the experiment and uh, we also uh, use an external power supply uh, to uh, provide uh, to power up our um, DRAM modules word line power rail uh, with the precise voltage we want. And uh, with this infrastructure, we have uh, fine grained control over DRAM commands, timing parameters, temperature, and word line voltage. And 
In our methodology to characterize these DRAM chips in first worst case conditions, we take two measures, minimize variation and test timing, and we disable all uh, ATS and ROHAR mitigation mechanisms to observe the bit flips in circuit level. And um, uh, we uh, perform our hammer tests within a refresh window so that the data retention bit flips are not uh, polluting our data. And we repeat our tests for multiple times to reduce the noise in the measurements. And uh, we use the worst case access sequence defined by the prior work, which is repeatedly accessing the two physically adjusted drops as fast as possible. Uh, in this study, we test 272 real DVR4 DRAM chips uh, from three major manufacturers uh, that implement different densities, die revisions, and chip organizations. Um, so, uh, you can find more detailed information about our experimental methodology, about our tests in for formulated as algorithms, and also uh, in, uh, more detailed information about the individual DRAM modules that we test. Um, okay, so I'll uh, continue with the uh, draw hammer under reduced wear line voltage. Uh, so I'll, I'll just give this takeaway as a high level takeaway and then I'll move into the individual observations that support it, this takeaway. So um, we, uh, our takeaway is that reducing wear line voltage reduces draw hammer vulnerability in, uh, in the sense that fewer bit flips occur when we uh, perform a draw hammer attack. And the uh, activation count at which the first bit flip occurs increases uh, with reduced wear line voltage. So in this plot, uh, we will be looking at uh, how uh, change in wear line voltage affects the bit error rate uh, during a raw hammer attack. And of course, uh, lower is better on the y-axis for uh, robustness. And so uh, we uh, show the bit error rate as a normalized value uh, to. Uh, to the bit error rate at uh, the nominal voltage level of 2.5 volts. And here uh, you see multiple curves, and each curve is uh, representing a different DRAM module. And uh, hopefully you see some shades uh, around the curves, and they represent the variation across DRAM rows within a DRAM module. And uh, we observe that as a dominant trend, fewer DRAM cells experience raw hammer bit flips under reduced wear line voltage. And uh, in addition to that, we also observe that uh, for uh, some cases, uh, the bit error rate increases with reduced wear line voltage. And this happens for a small fraction of DRAM rows. And uh, we repeat this analysis across uh, DRAM modules from all three manufacturers, and uh, uh, they all uh, we, we made the same observations on, uh, in all those uh, DRAM modules. Excuse me. <coughs> So next, uh, we are looking at how reducing word line voltage changes the minimum activation count to induce the first bit flip. So here, higher is better because if this uh, parameter is higher, it means that the attacker needs to activate a row more times to induce a bit flip, and it makes the attacker lives uh, harder. Um, so uh, here again, uh, each DRAM, each curve is uh, representing a different DRAM module, and um, we see the variation across DRAM rows uh, in, within a module as the shade around the curve. And as a dominant trend, again, we uh, see that the minimum activation count in uh, the first bit flip increases as the uh, word line voltage reduces. And again, uh, we have some outliers here. The minimum activation count to induce the first bit flip reduces uh, for some cases. And uh, we, when we look at uh, look at this data uh, uh, closer, we see that uh, it's, it only happens for a small fraction of DRAM rows. And uh, we observe we make these two observations as well uh, for DRAM modules from all three manufacturers. Um, so this is so far showing that uh, raw hammer vulnerability reduces with, re with reduced uh, word line voltage. So we have further analysis that I'm not going to go into details. We show how word line voltage effect on raw hammer vulnerability varies across uh, different DRAM rows and manufacturers in terms of the bit error rate and the activation count at which the first bit flip occurs in the paper. So you can find those analysis in the paper and there's a link here. Um, so, okay, uh, this is the takeaway that we uh, made from these observations, and uh, this, is, this was the first part of the analysis. The second part is looking at how reducing our line voltage affects the reliable DRAM operation. Um, and uh, here, uh, I wanted to remind you our hypothesis. Uh, we, 
the second part is uh, we, we, assume, we, we hypothesize that we can do this without significant effect in reliable DRAM operation and uh, uh, here the effect of reducing worldwide voltage in DRAM chip is basically you reduce the world, uh, voltage you apply to assert your word line and it can potentially cause a weaker channel so this is the reason that we are looking into this and this can potentially affect two processes uh, one is uh, row activation, the other one is the uh, data retention time. So we make two high-level takeaway observations, uh, takeaways. Here, uh, the first one is most tested DRAM chips reliably operate using nominal timing parameters due to built-in safety margins, or as known as guard bands. And for the DRAM chips that exhibit uh, er erroneous behavior, uh, they can still reliably operate with longer row activation latency. And uh, for the refresh rate, again, we have most of the DRAM chips uh, just working well uh, with the uh, nominal refresh rate. And uh, in a small fraction of them, we observe some data retention bit flips, and we uh, uh, observe that we can get rid of those bit flips using singular correcting codes or doubling the refresh rate for a small fraction of DRAM rows. So I'll start with the first takeaways observation. So we begin with investigating the um, how change in word line voltage affects the uh, reliable row activation latency. So here again, uh, we have uh, different colors, different curves for different DRAM modules, and the shade around the curve again shows the variation across DRAM row. Uh, so the dominant trend is that row activation latency increases with reduced word line voltage. This is what we expected, and. Uh, uh, the good thing is that the nominal activation latency already has a significant guard band and thanks to that most of the DRAM chips complete row activation before the nominal activation latency. So um, we observed this across uh, DRAM modules from all three manufacturers and uh, the, we, we observed that in total like 208 out of 272 DRAM chips uh, can work reliably with the nominal activation latency. And uh, for the remaining 64 DRAM chips, uh, 48 of them are from manufacturer A and they reliably work when we increase the uh, activation latency to 24 nanoseconds and uh, the remaining 16 uh, out of 64 is from manufacturer B uh, and uh, they also work when we increase the activation latency to 15 nanoseconds. Uh, we also observed that for, uh, no, no chip needs uh, extending or increasing our uh, no, uh, nominal activation latency uh, from manufacturer C. Okay, so to, to provide more insights into why this happens, we also conduct some spice simulations because we cannot measure the uh, voltage levels uh, precisely within the DRAM chip. Um, so in this study we use uh, these parameters with uh, 22 nanometer transistor model and we conduct a Monte Carlo analysis with like 5% radiation and 10,000 iterations. Um, so this is a, a waveform of the, how bitline voltage changes over time uh, during a row activation. And uh, by the definition, row activation completes when the bitline voltage reaches a threshold voltage specified as VTH here. And we observed that, uh, sorry, I forgot to mention, so different colors here uh, uh, show different uh, word line voltage levels. So yellow is 2.5 volts and purple is 1.7 volts. Um, so when we compare those two, we, uh, we saw that uh, the activation latency increases. And uh, this is, just as a reminder, this is a, again a, a cartoon of our DRAM cell. And uh, this time I want you to focus on the access transistor. So when we reduce the word line voltage, uh, the uh, gate and source voltage difference in the access transistor gets reduced. Uh, so it causes a weaker channel here uh, and therefore it increases the activation latency because it conducts uh, in a relatively poor way. So uh, this is uh, the probability density function from our spike simulation analysis uh, of the uh, minimum reliable activation latency. When we look at the worst case conditions for uh, different voltage levels, let's say for 1.9 volts and 2.5 volts, uh, we see that in the worst case at 1.9 volts with uh, that spike simulation, we observe that uh, uh, the nominal activation latency is still larger and uh, reducing the word line voltage only eats up from the available guard band. 
and uh, we conduct uh, we, we conclude that spike simulation results uh, in high level agree with our observations based on experiments on real DRAM chips. So we also have more spike simulation analysis in the paper about the charge restoration process because the uh, uh, Row activation is a destructive read uh, process in DRAM chip, so you need to restore the charge after you activate. And we observe that uh, DRAM has capacitor voltage can saturate at a lower voltage level when wartime voltage is reduced after draw activation. Um, and uh, DRAM has charge restoration latency can also increase with reduced wartime voltage. But I will refer you to our full paper for more details about this analysis. So this is the last part of my talk. Uh, we are going to look at uh, how the refresh rate is uh, affected from reduced wartime voltage. So we investigate how an increase in the refresh window affects the data retention bit error rate. So this is uh, not a very surprising plot. When you increase the refresh window, you refresh DRAM rows less frequently and you start observing bitter, uh, more bit flips. The interesting thing is, uh, here again, different colors show different voltage levels, and when we reduce wartime voltage, this bitter rate increases in a worse way than the nominal voltage. So the retention bitter increases as wartime voltage reduces. And it is not very visible in the plot, but when we look at the, look into the data in detail, we we saw that. Uh, 216 out of 272 DRAM chips reliably operate using nominal refresh rate due to built in safety guardpants. And uh, uh, this is across all DRAM modules uh, from three major manufacturers. Okay, so uh, the last part of the last part is uh, so we, we, we observe some bit flips at uh, nominal refresh rate, which is 64 milliseconds here in a small fraction of DRAM chips. So now we look at like how these uh, data retention bit flips are distributed uh, spatially. Uh, so our first observation is that we do not observe any 64 bit words with more than one bit flip. So we conclude that uh, by using singular operating codes, we can easily get rid of these bit flips at the nominal refresh rate. So uh, then we look at how these uh, uh, data words are distributed across different DRAM rows. So on the x-axis in this plot, you see number of 64 bit data words with one bit flip uh, in a DRAM row. And on the y-axis, it's the fraction of DRAM rows that exhibit this behavior. And we observe that a small fraction of DRAM rows contain erroneous words, because uh, most of them have like zero uh, 64 bit data words with uh, one bit flip. So when we look at the uh, data, uh, across all DRAM modules, we see that 16.4% uh, of DRAM rows have erroneous uh, words uh, at the small refresh rate uh, of like 64 milliseconds. So um, it means that uh, we can also double the refresh rate for this uh, small fraction of DRAM rows uh, only, so that we can get rid of this data retention with flips. And uh, this concludes these two takeaways uh, and uh, my talk as well. So I'll just uh, briefly summarize again. We provide the first row hammer characterization under reduced word line voltage and experimental results from 272 real DDR4 DRAM chips show that reducing word line, by reducing word line voltage we can reduce row hammer vulnerability in a way that uh, the bitter rates caused by row hammer attack uh, significantly reduces and the uh, uh, row needs to be activated significantly more times uh, to induce, a, uh, induce the first bit color. And uh, as a side effect, this word line voltage reduction can cause increases in row activation latency. Um, and uh, despite this uh, increase in the row activation latency, 76% of the tested DRAM chips can still reliably work, and the remaining 24% can reliably work with increased uh, row activation latency at a performance cost. And the third one is. Uh, uh, when we reduce word line voltage, uh, it can reduce the data retention time, so it can lead to retention bit flips. But uh, uh, among the tested DRAM chips, in 80% of them, we observe that the nominal refresh rate is enough to uh, uh, reliably operate, and the remaining 20% can reliably operate using a singular correcting code or doubling the refresh rate for a small fraction of DRAM rows. 
and we conclude that reduced overline voltage can reduce draw hammer vulnerability without significantly affecting reliable DRAM operation. And that's the end of my talk, and now I'm happy to answer any of your questions. So we, we don't know the exact technology or not because it's proprietary information, but uh, yeah, we, we, we know the dye revisions and the manufacturing dates. I can just pull that slide up. Yeah, so in the manufacturing date, it's uh, you noted know, as like the week and then the year. So uh, it's mostly like from 2016 upwards, like 2020, 2019, those DRAM chips. And, yeah, the dye revisions are also reported there, but unfortunately we don't know what exact technology is not. And all of them are DDR4 DRAM chips. Sure. The reason why I asked is because um, I expect that the card band that you have to reduce this technology with <coughs> more advanced nodes. So that's the reason why I asked. And the second question is, um, like you mentioned, the moment you reduce ADP, um, you would have to increase your activation latency or increase your refresh rate, right? So, yes. Um, I don't know if you have it in your paper, but you do not have a, a, an absolute number for your minimum activation count required to generate big flips in these DRAMs. So if you already increase, if you increase your activation latency, so within a refresh window, or if you reduce your refresh uh, window, then um, the number of activations that you can do within a refresh window also reduces, right? So is your minimum activation count lower than the number of um, activations required within your in within your um, new refresh window, uh, do you know? Yeah, so short answer is yes. <laughs> um, uh, so uh, it, it interprets, yes, that's true that when we increase the row activation latency, it, it will affect like how many times you can hammer a row, but the gap in between the number of times you can actually hammer a row with like nominal uh, uh, parameters, it, you can actually hammer a DRAM row for like 1.4 million times in a 64 millisecond time window. And uh, you only need like 10,000 activations to induce a bit flip on an average, let's say. So that reduction is not actually uh, affecting the, uh, yeah, the, the number of times. So the minimum activation count is still lower than what yeah, it's, it's the a number of hammers that you can get. There are like orders of magnitude difference. Right, sure. Thank you. Uh, by lowering the voltage? Uh, 
by efficiency, like of in, in terms of performance? Like, uh, is there any effect on the performance, overall performance of the chip uh, by reducing the voltage? Because there must be some reason that that voltage is uh, work there and work the same for all manufacturers. I see. So uh, we, we looked at it in a preliminary level, uh, to be honest. Uh, so uh, we report that for some like the chips, you need to increase the rotation latency, so it affects you, the overall latency of your memory requests as well, right? Uh, but uh, and, and also for the refresh rate, if you double the refresh rate for some rows, uh, then you will be paying more bandwidth for the DRAM refresh operations. But at the same time, uh, these kind of uh, overheads are uh, usually overlapped with like idle time of the memory or uh, by performing smart memory schedule and decisions. So it, it actually begs a, a more detailed analysis about that. So I, I, I cannot say like this causes like this much performance or head or energy or head at the moment. Yeah. Okay, great, thank you. Uh, one uh, last question and I'm actually uh, out of curiosity. So you, uh, I've seen the presentation setup that you have shown us. It's like the heat maps uh, on, on, like on chip, right? This one? So that, yeah, exactly. So that's how you achieve the uh, row handling effect. Yeah. So, and then uh, you also mentioned like you have checked uh, how many more than 200 chips or something like that? 272 DRAM chips. More, more, yeah, chips. Classic. Just wondering if you have done it manually, like one by one, how much time it took to, uh, to do all those experiments? Oh, so in, in our case, we have like multiple of these setups. Oh, so. okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, we parallelize that process. Oh, it's still, it takes like uh, more than a month, I think. <laughs> ah, great. Thank you so much. Thanks. Thank you for the talk. I got one quick question. Did you look into the reason the Warhammer effect or the Warhammer process actually does do the bit flip? I, I couldn't get So, right now we have a observed behavior where if you hammer the row, you get bit flips on yes. the adjacent rows, right? Yes. Did you look into the reason why the bit flips happens in the first place? Oh, I see. So there are prior works actually looking at that. Okay. So there are uh, uh, different hypotheses, I, I would say, for the error mechanisms. So. Uh, one is like capacitive coupling between uh, two word lines or uh, between a word line and a, a nearby capacitor. Uh, the other one is just like electromagnetic distur disturbance. Uh, All right. Thank you. Thanks. Any more questions? We have a very naive question. Um, do you save any overall energy to the application by reducing this? So I wish I would be able to say like uh, there is great energy reduction, but when we look at the um, energy consumption of this power rail that we are scaling down the voltage, uh, it's not the major contributor of DRAM energy consumption. So yes, we save some energy, but it's not really uh, useful or visible at, at this moment. <laughs> okay. So thank you. Thanks.